to the sector. <laughs> Welcome back to episode number 11, everyone. You are here with your favorite den mothers, Lauren and Camille. Den mothers. And that's right. If you're here with us for the first time, we are full blood sisters, same mama, same daddy. (laughs) (laughs) And we are best friends, sisters, confidants, little spiritual beings together. And we have joined forces to create a wolf pack from your dreams. (laughs) Wow. This is a really fun intro today. This is a fun intro. I feel like my intros have been so boring lately. So, Well, that's because we've been boring. Let's be real. We've been boring. Boring. Yeah. Super boring. boring. And (laughs) not today. Not today. Do not test me. (laughs) No. (laughs) So welcome. Welcome to episode number 11. Lucky 11. We are very excited to have you back with us. I'm going to say at the beginning this time instead of the end, go ahead and give us a little follow on Instagram at The Den Mothers. Our personal pages are at SheWolfLauren and at Camille Misbach. And... We will be launching episodes, fun adventures, all different things on those. So follow along there. Happy Wednesday. We love you so much. Happy hump day. Ow, ow, ow. Yoo-hoo. Something that I'd like to say now that it's my turn to talk is that, Camille, <laughs> you do such a good job with intros. I'm so grateful for you. For those of you who don't personally know us, which I'm just going to go ahead and assume is most of you, unless our mom is the one listening every single time. Is, um, Camille is so good at keeping me organized. Like if this was just my podcast, it would be such a fuck show. It would be a mess. I, I would be like rambling on. Sometimes my episodes would be like 10 minutes. Sometimes they would be <laughs> oh yeah, two hours of just I, sobbing. Yeah. Of just sobbing. <laughs> <laughs> I have definitely kept us on track, but it's my duty. Yeah. And it's really my passion. You're so good at it. Yeah. Thank you're you. So good at I it. love I love listening to podcasts. So I feel like I know what the people like. <laughs> That's true. And Camille, I would like to ask you this. How was your week, kid? <gasps> Dang. Okay, so my week has been wonderful. A lot of painting. (laughs) Yesterday, my brain was racing with business ideas, but I'm trying to hold off for a while, um, just for a couple months, just to really focus on the podcast and getting to heal. So I'm doing that, but I'm really excited for adventures in the future, business ventures, which are going to look a lot like group healing sessions. Wow. For fear and anxiety and potentially mixing some painting in. Wow. So I'm really excited about that. I feel like I honestly created my whole business plan last night for me when I was paddleboarding for an hour. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so now I'm just going to write it down and put it on my back burner for a little while. But instead of doing a full weekly update and going deep into my healing journey, which is what I usually do, I asked a question on my Instagram the other day after episode number 10, which was, where's the craziest place you've had sex? And I want to share anonymously some people's responses. Okay. How fun. (laughs) Okay. So Judy. (laughs) (laughs) Judy, the lawyer, 464. I love pretending like I'm calling people out, but no, there's no duty. Okay, so here are just a few that I really enjoyed. You enjoyed them? Yeah, that caused me great joy. Okay. Where is Disney, that from, by the way? Where is you that said joy? deep joy one day on an episode, <laughs> and it was really funny. Okay, okay. so deep this joy. is one of my top ones. Disneyland Tom Sawyer Island up in the treehouse. It was Dude. roped off, so it was nice and private. That's fucking fun because the Tom yeah. Sawyer part is so great. Uh, porta potty, that was probably my most disgusted one, but also really I mean, freaking cool. Yeah. One of the funniest ones I read church parking lot with the pastor. <laughs> <laughs> That's Damn. crazy. Uh huh. Yeah. Uh, lifeguard stand. Okay. That one's pretty fun. On a grocery store checkout check stand belt. Like one of the 
where wait, you put the groceries okay, on. Okay, so they must have worked there. This must have been As an employee. A, wait, wait. Okay, no. We need this isn't something that we can just spew these out. I have to create a story around them. Like Okay. Okay. Imagine this person the, had to have been the employee. Okay, yes. And when I'm thinking about like public sex, I'm not doing super vulnerable positions. Like I'm doing no. the kind of positions that I can like <laughs> hike my pants up at the like as or I'm wearing like a dress with no underwear but I'm thinking if you're on the conveyor belt of a grocery store you're you're prone you're on your back with your pants off well someone could have been bent over it oh or I like to imagine on their back no I like to imagine (laughs) that one person was controlling the conveyor belt and it was just going eh, 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 back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And the person's on their back like a slip and slide. Okay. I'd like to, I'd like to think of them in a pretzel <laughs> in the most vulnerable position. And they're both just completely naked. <laughs> Man. I got a missionary. Uh, yeah, maybe so. Maybe a little bit of sideways. You're trying to rush through these and I want to have a fantasy. <laughs> No. I okay. have so many. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, one is a hot tub filled with friends. That seems like an orgy, my friend. And good that for sounds- you. Yeah. Oh, and- I hate hot tub sex. Ew. I Pool or hot tub just kind of grosses me out. I just feel like there's a lot of shit. I feel like it's just a UTI waiting to happen. Not only is it a UTI, but you're like douching my pussy with chlorine. Like she's dry, she's stale, and she's confused. Uh, She's like, this isn't for me. When there's water involved, like I actually really like shower sex, but I'm fully turning the nozzle away from my body because otherwise it's like – Right. (laughs) It's kind of like the feeling when you just take soap off your skin and it's like -er, -er." (laughs) eater. Yeah. It hurts. That doesn't sound fun. Uh, an American Eagle fitting room. Ooh. McDonald's bathroom. Okay. Uh, changing room at Old Navy. <laughs> Fun. And then I got a lot of like hiking, trails, waterfalls, a lot of outdoor parks, stuff like that. So Man. I thought that was really fun. I love that. Yeah. So thanks, Wolfpack. That was fun for me. Okay. I and just Lauren, posted. How's your week? Wait, I just posted this question like five minutes ago because I got excited. Let me see if I have any responses yet. Everyone who's watching on YouTube, just look at Momo. God, she's so look at cute. This. this is who she is. Look at her little street paws. <laughs> okay. Lauren. In an art installation at a school after hours next to the classroom. Mm-hmm. On my car, hit the exterior lock button, locked myself out. <laughs> <laughs> I got That's that one funny. too, actually. I wonder if that was the same person. <laughs> yeah, I wonder. That's hilarious. Um, okay, okay so. my week. My week has been really good. I love my week. I have a lot of really exciting stuff happening right now with I'm clients. sorry, are you tired? <laughs> oh, I wasn't. You just it's did just, an extended stretch. <laughs> it felt so good. <laughs> I don't know. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> feels so nice. Um, okay. Well, I've been having a really great week. So uh-huh. great. I I saw you quite a bit, which I loved. And yeah. I was walking. I was working out. I'm doing really great with clients and just creating new aspects of my business. And right now I'm in Marina del Rey, Los Angeles with oh. Shane. And the second we got here yesterday, you know who we ran smack dab into? Mr. Dennis Rodman himself, which <laughs> yeah. I didn't know this. I don't know who that was, is. Okay. He, okay. He is the most – he's like Michael Jordan famous in the basketball world. He oh. played on the Bulls, the Chicago Bulls in the 90s, and it was like this trio – of incredible basketball players. And he was like this badass, would always dye his hair different colors, party machine, was married to Carmen Electra. Like he's just, he was oh like my this God. bad boy of basketball before being a bad boy was like acceptable at all. And so I did not realize that this was Shane's childhood. Like it was literally his childhood um, idol. 
idol. Like he, I did, I've never seen Shane act in any particular way. So I asked a woman, I'm like, what is that man's name again? I can't remember his name. And she's like, it's Dennis Rodman. I'm like, Shane, Dennis Rodman's over there. And he goes, Dennis fucking Rodman. He like shit his pants. <laughs> <laughs> and I thought it was so cute. Cause like, she, I mean, he literally shit his pants. He turned bright red. He started shaking. He couldn't handle it. <laughs> no. He just walked in. And there he is was, now. Uh, Shane, uh, Shane, uh, just give Shane. us a quick thought. Give us a quick yeah. thought about Dennis, Dennis Rodman. Rodman. How is Dennis Rodman? Dennis Rodman, how is he? Yeah. He's a unique man. <laughs> Tall. <laughs> and? Very quiet. Very quiet. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he was quiet, but we Very were just talking about quiet. how excited you were to meet him. Oh, my blood dropped down to my feet when I saw him. I turned into a ghost. I could barely speak. <laughs> he could literally barely speak. I could speak. barely speak. I could barely walk over. I was like, oh. Shane. I was like, Shane, let's go take a photo of Dennis Grumman. He's like, you think we can? I'm like, yes. He <laughs> literally yeah. he's trembling, pushing our <laughs> luggage cart. <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah. Oh, but that we, is freaking fantastic. But we did you know get a what's photo funny? You know what's funny is being starstruck because you don't feel like you're going to be it. When right. I lived in LA, you would see some famous people, but I was walking to the Apple store one time and all of a sudden walking from, uh, I, I knew they were going to walk directly in front of me was Owen Wilson. And yeah. I love him. He was much shorter than I assumed, but we were just making eye contact for I don't know, 15 seconds, and all I could think to get out when he passed me was, <laughs> I. <laughs> Not like, I'm a huge fan. I was just like, I. <laughs> As he passed me, it's like so embarrassing. <laughs> okay. Well, <laughs> just I. <laughs> <laughs> and he like well, I had nodded at me like, hey, <laughs> yeah, it's me. <laughs> it was it's just so funny. pretty painful. It's so I funny think. because, wait, because Shane's, it, Shane felt like a part of his identity was formed around Dennis Rodman. Like Dennis Rodman oh really gave God. him his permission. And I'm like, he, Shane didn't say a single word. He didn't say <laughs> hi. He didn't laugh. He didn't even look at him. He just literally did nothing. That is so funny. Better. Okay, I feel like for next week's episode, I am going to ask the audience who the craziest person they've ever, or the most famous person they've ever run into, and if they were so starstruck or if they could actually say something. Okay, that because makes sense. Because I, I want to know who people run into. I swear to God, if I ran into Justin Bieber, I think I'd just project how vomit. <laughs> <laughs> He's one of those weird people for me where I'm just like so in love. <laughs> <laughs> I just That's love the so way he funny. loves Haley. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, you just love him. <laughs> I just absolutely love him. Okay, so speaking of, you know, perfect people. Yep. Just kidding. Yep. Let's talk. This week, our subject is going to be perfectionism, and we're going to roll this into performance during sex. So, Lauren, yeah. why were you so interested in the subject this week? Okay, so I – this subject came up because a lot of my clients are these, like, really high performers. Like, they'll either mm -hmm. be – you know, it's an investment to work with me. So it does – it makes sense that, like, people have – they're, like, high achievers. People will yeah. be, you know, really high up in the military or, like, these badasses in different ways, like, owning their own businesses, blah, blah, blah. And one of the things that comes up a lot is that – this perfectionism aspect hides you from your own healing. And so it came up today with one of my beautiful clients and we just, I wanted to just talk about how important it is to like give yourself a little bit of a break to recognize when you're doing things that are preventing you from your healing. Because a lot of us don't even know that we're doing things that are holding us back. And a lot of the habits that we have where it'll just be like, oh, I'm just a perfectionist or, oh, I'm just, you know, a little bit OCD in this way or, oh, I'm just a little bit whatever. It's really holding you back from your true self and your true potential and allowing people to see you for who you really are. So, Man. Yeah. I mean, I, before we even get started, I just want to say how much I identify with this subject and it's because 
I have been that high achieving person forever. Mm -hmm. And I do want to tell the wolf pack that I have, I've realized lately, I do think that this, the OCD and perfectionism part has been a part of me for ever. Like I, mm-hmm. as even a kid, it's like I was obsessed with finishing tasks, obsessed with doing these tedious things. I think it got exponentially worse after I experienced a trauma in high school, which I am healing from currently. And I will share with the Wolf Pack on an upcoming episode more than likely. Mm-hmm. But that kind of threw me into this high achieving person who was constantly busy always focusing on getting the answers, like everything perfect because my body was essentially protecting me from healing. And so Lauren and I have had this realization lately about my life and Mm -hmm. I'm working on those things. I also want to say for the perfectionists that yes, it can prevent you from healing. I think once you have recognized it though, those behaviors can also really help you succeed in certain ways as long mm. as you're in control of those things. Mm. And I, saw, I think awareness of them, less, less about control and more about awareness. Yes, exactly. I saw something that just said, you know, people with anxiety and OCD, you can – launch yourself into like being a really wonderful business person and entrepreneur and all those things using those skills. It's just you have to, you have to use them in specific ways, if that makes sense. Because it can turn into the perfectionism thing where all of a sudden all you're doing is just working nonstop. (laughs) Right. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and, and not just the perfectionism aspect of like working, but the ways that it came up for me was like, before people would come over, I would make sure that my house was spotless. Like it would give me anxiety. It probably still would. Like I like yeah. to have a clean home. But before it was more about because I, when, I, when people came over, I didn't want them to have one more – like one reason to um, like judge me or dislike me if I could control it. Hmm. Right? Like I wouldn't want somebody to come over and be like, oh, Lauren is a dirty person. So I was doing Hmm. all these things not because I liked it, but because I didn't want to be perceived in a certain way. And so – Wow. Yeah, that makes sense. And honestly, I feel like a lot of these behaviors, I would say two things, is either maybe sparked from a trauma Mm. or is genetic. Genetic? (laughs) I you mean like genetic, ancestral. Okay, like passed down from our grandmas and our moms. Yeah, I mean the perfectionism that we experience, we can trace back many a generation in our family. Oh yeah. Like many a generation. Yep. But okay, so ways that – so I want to talk a little bit about the perfectionism aspect in kind of overachieving because that is – like we will – It's the reason that they always say, like, I think it's the basis behind money doesn't buy happiness. Like, we hear that all the time. And it really is because it doesn't matter how much you're achieving or how much you're doing right. Like, you can be in a situation where you're making a shitload of money, where you are you seem to be in, like, a healthy relationship. You have friendships. You have all this stuff. But at the base of everything, you're just still not happy and maybe, like, being diagnosed with anxiety or depression and you can't figure out what it is, Mm -hmm. maybe you're doing too much, sis. Like you're probably doing too much. You're probably filling your calendar in a perfect way and having everything color coordinated and like making sure that you're, you know, getting everything done, working the most hours, doing all the stuff, being the best friend, throwing the baby shower, having the bridal shower. Like it's probably too much because your body is protecting you from the pain of healing. So if you're hearing this and you're like, whoa, that's me, it's time for you to create space in your life, like space in your schedule, space physically, declutter your home, get rid of shit that no longer serves you and let go of you holding yourself to such a high standard Mm -hmm. because the likelihood of you holding other people to that super high standard is high. If you're holding yourself to like having to be this 
perfectionist constantly, you're probably doing that to other people, which is making your relationship suffer as well. Yeah. <laughs> Damn. That was so much. And also – It was so much. Was it confusing? No. I, I think that that was really perfect. And I'm just thinking of like what thing to touch on first because I had so many thoughts as you were talking. Oh, and there's Sexy Shane in the background <laughs> oh. <laughs> for the second time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, just you guys can pay extra. You, you get a free show in. on YouTube today because Mr. Shane has made some appearances. <laughs> Shane, you're gonna be on our um, YouTube. Yeah, I looking hot. <laughs> looking really hot. Right. I just yeah. know so many friends. I, I can think of so many people in my life where this applies to, where mm -hmm. it's like the per the person who, when people come over, they have snacks ready. Um, they're perfect in their job. They're perfect in their relationship. And it's like when things slow down, all these emotions come up and it's like uh, so overwhelming because all of their healing is surfacing because they don't have anything to hide behind anymore. Right. This has shown – Michael and I are watching Peaky Blinders right now, and it's like a Thomas Shelby reference if people watch this. Blinders, and this is a little spoiler alert, so if you haven't seen these seasons, you can just skip ahead like 30 seconds. But he takes a break and um, finally takes some time off, and all of the stuff from war, his wife dying, almost losing his kid, like all this stuff hits him at once. And he he's like sobbing and uncontrollably and like – you can see just this whirling craziness. And I feel like that is literally what happens to people who are constantly busy like that because it's yep. happening to me right now. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's like I was that overachieving high performer and then all of a sudden I took time off and it's like, whoa, all yeah. of these things you've been doing has been masking a lot of pain and trauma mm -hmm. that you endured when you were younger um, I also wanted to say from one of – something that you said earlier, and I do – I think that this relates. I see this happen to women and I feel like it is a protective barrier that they do to not getting hurt mm. is they will pack their schedule with so many things that all of a sudden they don't have time for a relationship. Mm -hmm. Or like don't have time for love. Mm -hmm. So they're perfect in so many ways. And it's like, oh, but I don't have time to date. You know, I don't have time mm -hmm. for that. And it's like when you really boil it down, are mm -hmm. you not having time or are you making sure you don't have time for that? Because that's not something you can be in control over. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And to add on to that, now that I feel – feel like I found love, mm -hmm. one of the things that I just want to remind people that I, I wouldn't have even been able to comment on like two months ago is just that like love is the only thing that matters. It is. I know. Like definitively. I know. It is truly – I mean, call me, a right. hippie, call me like a Jesus freak, whatever you want – Love is the only thing that matters, and that's love for yourself, love for your life, love for others. So if you are having a schedule that's so busy that you cannot prioritize love, then that ain't it. That ain't it. That ain't it. Yeah, I feel like – let's touch on the feminine and masculine of perfectionism as well. Yeah, I think that's so important. So uh, I want to do a whole episode on like my feminine healing and on yours because yeah. it happened for us in different ways, but like in very similar ways. And um, I think of the – Shane and I talk about this all the time. The, the masculine is kind of like the mountain. It's like the stable, rocky – terrain. The feminine is like the energetic yoga of life. Yeah. <laughs> That's kind of like how we would say it. It's like the energy, the emotion, it's all of that. And the masculine is kind of more of like the 
these are the healed versions, right? Mm -hmm. It's like the mountain. When you are overdoing one, and I think this happens a lot because modern women, there is this expectation that we do it all, right? Like Mm. you're a mother, you're a CEO, you're this, you're that, especially in like the Western world. Um, We get caught in the doer mentality, like doing, doing, doing constantly. So you're always doing something, even when you're healing. I, I was, I'm like halfway through a caption about this, but like we're doing the work, we're doing the most, we're doing, 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 yeah. doing, we're doing the healing, we're going to the therapy, we're doing, doing, doing. And the feminine, the essence of the feminine is a receive. It's to receive, it's to mm. be. So it's to receive the love, it's to receive the full cup, it's to receive mm-hmm. the energy around you and to be in the being. So it's the taking a bath. It's taking time for yourself. It's asking what you need for what you need and just being more in the space. It's holding the space. So so when we're constantly in the do, 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 it really throws us out of balance. So if you are identifying with me saying the do, 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 you, you'll you know it. You'll feel it because you're like, mm-hmm. uh-oh. I am do, do, doing. I'm committing to too much. I'm doing the most. So your task is to start saying no more and to start asking for more help. Mm. To start surrendering, start asking, start being in a receiver role a little bit more. And obviously we both, we have to have the yin and the yang, the sun and the moon, like the balance of nature. We have to have that. So we're going to be both. But we sometimes really neglect the feminine and the feminine's the vulnerable. The feminine is the like, oh, it's the bottom of the exhale, as my friend Amanda says. Like it's at the bottom of that that's so important for us to tap into. And so if you're in perfectionist mindset, perfectionism is a toxic masculinity trait. It's a toxic capitalism trait. And so you get to Recognize that, number one. And number two, start combating it by being. Yeah, I think that also – okay, so two things that I've seen recently on Instagram that I really related to is no days off is not a flex. No. It is not a flex. That is such a toxic – no, and it's a really toxic trait right now in our society that – People are just doing, doing, doing every single thing and not taking days off. And I mean, I worked in a culture like that and they're like, oh, we do promote vacation, but it's like vacation, but you're also working nights, you know, before you go on vacation. No, no, you need to take days off to just do nothing. And the thing about it is when you're a perfectionist and you take the days off to do nothing, it's going to be really uncomfortable. Yeah. But that's the most important part and recognize that it feels uncomfortable and think to yourself, why when I am just relaxed doing no tasks, am I feeling the most discomfort discomfort in my body? And it's because you need more of it. Yeah. (laughs) You need more of it. You need time to process. You need time to heal. And so, yes, take the days off. Not to mention, I'm going to say something else right now and I'm about to get passionate, so I need to uncross my legs. Okay. I feel like sometimes I'm a little bit uh, like talking about perfectionism shouldn't be something that I'm like allowed to talk about because it isn't something that I suffer from. <laughs> like I'm mm. not a perfectionist, right? I'm like a get shit done kind of person. That's never been that hard for me. Yeah. But one of the things that I've noticed again and again and again with my clients and with people that I really care about is that perfectionism robs you of joy. Like if you of deep joy. Because if you're so focused on every little detail being perfect, number one, nobody fucking cares. You're not cooler if you're perfect. Yeah. Nobody likes perfect people because it makes you feel disconnected. You can't like, it's not real. So we, we know that nobody's perfect. So stop trying to be perfect. There is no definition of perfect. You're creating it in your own head and it's robbing you of the joy that you were born to feel. So stop. <laughs> yeah. It's stupid. 
It is stupid. And thank you. No, that makes a lot of sense. And I feel like I had had that mindset. And then I decided to go off the path that I had set for myself. And what I realized was I wasn't doing this perfect path anymore that I thought everyone was really into. And literally nobody gave a fuck. (laughs) Nobody cares. If anything, people have literally been commenting on my stuff like, you are glowing. You're doing great. It's like now that I'm sharing, like, yeah, I have fucking anxiety attacks. I have trauma I've never addressed. I've had all these things. Like, I had a friend. I met up with a friend from college and she's like, I'm so proud of you for coming out with this because you used to come around at school in college and we would all be like, oh my God, Camille is the perfect person. And I was also so unhealed. I was Mm -hmm. so unhealed in that moment, just covering Mm -hmm. up so much. And it's like the more you address and are honest about what you're going through, the more people feel connected to you. That's genuine connection, not trying to be the perfect person. And that's living. Like when you're in connection, when you're in love, when you're living in those those elements, those aspects of life, that's what life is about. Like when you take a step back and look at your life, what do you actually want to feel? You actually want to feel connection and joy and love. Is your perfectionism getting you any closer to those things? No, it's a distraction. Yeah, it's not. And um, I also want to say this, and I was, I was wanting to say this earlier, but I saw another thing which I, I definitely think that this is related. Um, okay. I saw a thing that said, <laughs> I saw a thing that said, our generation doesn't have hobbies anymore. Yes. People pick up things to be side gigs or hustles. And that's right. another toxic masculine perfectionism trait. So yeah. stop looking at everything like it's going to be a side hustle. Like unless, obviously there are different times in your life because I feel like there are moments where you can have that creative spark and it's like, mm-hmm. okay, let's focus on this business, but also make sure you're just doing things to cause you joy. Every single thing you do doesn't have to be perfected in a way where you can make money or um, start right. a business off of it. Like just pick up a hobby to spark your creative side. Mm-hmm. That's beautiful. That's tapping into the feminine. That's not having the toxic trait of always having to do things perfectly. Mm-hmm. And yeah. I really, I really, t- I, I felt so connected with that because I was kind yeah. of looking at all the people on Instagram and it's like, yeah, I own this and this and this. And no one's just doing things for fun anymore. Everything's do everybody's doing things to be perfect or successful in those aspects. And if you ask those people, I mean, I hope they're happy. I hope they're feeling joy. But also, like, we can't be sure. They might be, like, really miserable or having these, like, really tough times with their families or their relationships or whatever. That isn't – we don't see that. So if you're comparing yourself with other people and, like, you know, shaping your life around how other people that you don't even know are living their lives. Like the more I get to know people who I met on social media, a lot of which, a lot of whom have huge followings, like they're human. They have shit. Like they're not some of the, the, the time, like they're not feeling super happy, but they did a photo shoot a week ago where they looked really happy, you know? And Oh yeah. Like when it becomes a business, you still post. You still are putting out captions and putting out stuff like that. So mm-hmm. um, anyway. But perfectionism that has – social media has had such a role in perfectionism, toxic perfectionism in our society. Mm. I was posting a photo today and I could have chosen a filter that made me look like I had been worked on by a professional makeup artist, hairstylist. I mean – It is so unbelievable. And this stems even deeper perfectionism than just like doing your tasks. It's like what you look like. I mean, people are – our perception of perfect is so fucked up right now because of what's happening Mm -hmm. in social media. And it is detrimental to our – to our generation and mostly the generation younger than us. Like to grow up thinking that you need to be that perfect person and get all those likes it's literally killing people because yeah, they it think is. they're perfect. I, I was listening to this the other day on a podcast. Like, 
you're thinking they're perfect and then they say one thing that isn't the perfect version of what you wanted them to be and they're just canceled and now they're yeah. a drug addict. Like right. now they're committing suicide. It's like people are literally killing themselves over this idea of perfectionism based yeah. on <laughs> fucked up filters. <laughs> I know. Seriously. I mean, it's well, so bad. Yeah. Where I really want to spin this conversation is – um, towards just, perfectionism in the bedroom, basically. Yes, touching on per- yeah. because that social media is a whole other topic we could go into, yeah. even though we sort of touched on it. But let's talk about performing during sex because I think that's yeah. really important for the wolf pack to hear. Okay, so this is totally something that <clears throat> affected me for, I don't know, since I started having sex. Because Same. okay, so many of us perform sex before we have sex because <laughs> because we learn about sex through some element of porn. A lot of us. Mm. I asked a poll recently on my Instagram if people's parents had ever like had a talk with them about sex. I was actually floored, and it got so many responses. Seventy percent. of people who answered the question said no, that their parents never had a talk with them. And it was like 2,000 people answered that. Oh, my God. Yeah. That is shocking. Yeah, 70%. So that means that people are either finding out about sex through their own research, which is – I don't think that's happening. They're not like, what is sex? Through friends, through like their teachers at school, and most often – Ready. Most often through porn. Like porn is how people, especially now, think about how much access teenagers have and like people who, even young kids know how to play with iPads and stuff. So they're absolutely learning about sex through some element of visual stimulus. So you see these like perfectly cropped bodies, people doing perfect movements, making really high pitched sex sounds like, you know, that kind of thing, like where it's very up and higher. Mm -hmm. And so we get stuck in this mentality of performance where like you're supposed to get off from just penetration and you're supposed to like have this penis that looks a particular way. And so our minds get fucked up about sex before we even ever have sex and then it just carries on for god knows how long yeah i mean i faked orgasms for so long yeah (laughs) me too i mean that's a huge part of the perfectionism thing it was like being the perfect one who was like able to come in any position i feel like yes which is so awful it like makes me hurt actually this is my husband is honestly the first person I've never faked an orgasm with. Yeah. And that's really hard to admit, but I have I figured out how to masturbate really young, like literally on accident. And even then, I was still embarrassed to tell people because it wasn't the same way that I had seen yeah. or heard of or talked about or even anything. Like, yeah. God, performing sex is so sad. It and is so I, I, sad. We've gotten a question before of like, I see people in porn coming from penetration. How do I do that? And it's like, that's probably not how your body works. So yeah. you're just going to have to release that perfectionist view, you know, and mm-hmm. and own exactly what your body does. And just explore your body, you know? Like in porn, it's like such specific things that happen again and again and they're portrayed in a very particular way. And it's just like, oh, yeah, okay, so everybody can just do that. Like obviously they're doing it. I must be able to do it. And no, like a lot of times they've, number one, explored their bodies. Number two, they're getting paid to do these kind of things. And they're actors. They're being paid to have sex. Okay, there is absolutely no shame in sex work. No. I encourage no. sex work to people who that is their calling. Like, yeah. Um, I, I you did a, an interview with Alice Little. Was that? Yeah. Her? Is that her yeah. name? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And she is such an incredible woman. And there are women who are making big impacts and changes on sex work. And it's 
been one of the longest careers since the fucking beginning of time. Yeah. I mean, it's it has crazy. Been. So and there's no shame on sex work, but just know that what's happening in the porn industry isn't how you're supposed to be acting in the bedroom. Well, and there is a shame. On, there is no shame in sex work. And there is a lot of shame on you for the porn industry because number one, it's mostly run by white men. Yeah. And number two, it there's an element of like of perfectionism to it and of faking things. And if you like to watch porn, that's a different thing than if you think sex is supposed to be like porn. Like if you think that sex is supposed to be like porn, you're probably not going to be getting off that much and you're going to have really shallow lame sex because it's just not that way, you know? Yeah, there's so so much to say. I just, if somebody, if you're listening to this and you are performing sex and you're, you know, feeling kind of nasty about it or you're like, oh my God, I've been faking orgasms. I just want to give you a virtual hug because I really don't think it's your fault and I don't want you to feel guilty for this. Mm. Um, I felt so guilty about faking orgasms, like so guilty. And honestly, Shane is the only person, like same for me. Like I faked orgasms, not every time, but sometimes I would because it's like I knew in – I don't know what it was. It was like almost this element of control for me. Like I was faking an orgasm because I would get to a point where it felt really good, but I didn't think I was going to come. And instead of just like letting it kind of die down, I'd be like, well, I might as well just have this elaborate – I don't know. I don't know what it was in my brain, but it wasn't good. It didn't no. feel good. And then I would feel like I was lying and be really hard on myself. So um, I wrote a blog post actually about 10 reasons why people fake orgasm. So we can link that yeah. here. We can link that in the bio or in our uh, description. But you don't have to be perfect. Your titties are going to sag. Your nipples might not look normal, normal, right? Like you might have one boob that's bigger than the other. You might have a vagina or a clitoris that's – bigger than your friends or smaller than your friends or your inner labia might be coming out further than your outer labia or your you know your outer labia might be colored in a way that you don't like your butthole might be weird you might have a big section between yeah. your vagina and your butthole or you may not have a section at all like yeah you you're allowed to be sexual and a sexual goddess in exactly the body that you're in right now Like if you are worried about being perfect and about performing in a particular way, having a particular kind of orgasm, let your sex be sex, which is kind of dirty, kind of ugly, kind of weird. Like sex is weird. Your face isn't going to look like the porn star's face because I don't know about you, but when I'm coming, I don't even know what my face is doing. It's like (laughs) I'm not even thinking about my face. Okay. And I just want to say – You've said this before, Lauren, we're here for pleasure over performance. So prioritize pleasure over performing sex. But also it's so it's so much deeper than that, because this can stem from body dysmorphia, body, you know, shame around your Mm -hmm. body, self-confidence issues like this is going to be something you have to work through if you're performing sex. It's not just something you can, you know. Oh, I recognize it. Okay, now it's changed in my mind. Like a lot of the time that's some deep-rooted issues. So Mm -hmm. you can have – first of all, I just want to say this. If you're going through this and you have a supportive partner, this is something Mm -hmm. you can overcome. Right. If you have a shitty partner, yeah, goodbye. (laughs) Yeah. Because you – what what the truth of it is is – you can have conversations with your partner about you not feeling sexy or like I get so uncomfortable in this or like do you look at my stomach rolls when I'm in this position and the answer right. is no if your person is right and it's a it's a partner who actually cares about your pleasure they're not looking at your role they're not looking at your cellulite when your butt cheek is flapped over like they do not care they care about your pleasure I can understand how this can get so – this can, you know, go down such a bad road, though, if you're in a relationship that isn't serving you or isn't isn't a positive relationship because 
I've been in a, t- in a relationship like that before where the person was kind of between me and this other woman. And I was like, well, fuck, she's way skinnier than me. Like, God, I can't feel good in this. You know, it's yeah. so I can see how people can get so wrapped up in wanting to be perfect because they're trying to win someone over. So they decide yes. to do that during sex. And yeah, I just want to say – F that person and you deserve you deserve more than that. If yeah. you're performing to win someone's approval, you're with the wrong person. Yeah. I mean, mm-hmm. I had this like – totally honestly, I had this whole vision of like my body right now, probably not to other people. I don't know. I can – it's hard for me to tell. But for me, it's not where I – want it. (laughs) Like it's Mm not the best for me that it's been. And I had this thing in my head that I wasn't going to like meet my person until my body was like in perfect (gasps) shape. I know it's really sad, but like when Shane and I got together, I'm like, he, I'm like, he must be thinking that my body is supposed to look a different way. Oh like my he God. must be expecting my perfection. Like he must be having the same vision of my body that I do. And that's Ugh. just not true. Like that it's is not so true. so sad. And A lot so, of the time it's just in your head. It's just in your head. And so um, I'm just being honest and like vulnerable about that because that – like here I am. I, I help people with their confidence and their sexual confidence and I found myself being like, oh no. <laughs> I'm feeling insecure because I'm not where I want to be. I've been dealing with like some gut issues too. And like, mm. I'm just bloated. Like I just don't feel my sexiest. And it's like right when Shane and I are having sex, you know, yeah. like for the first time. Mm. <laughs> and so I'm like, I just wanted to be perfect. And Ugh. to me, I wasn't. That is and so, so hard to hear. Yeah. And that's my truth. And it was like, damn, I thought I was over this, but I'm not. Like things spark it. So um, I've been leaning into this and this topic means a lot to me right now because it's like, oh, wow, I get to choose to focus on my pleasure over performance again and again and again and again. Yeah. And I had a conversation with him about it too. Like I have expected myself to be perfect for so long. I don't feel perfect right now and it's making me like – insecure. It's making me not as able to like focus on things that I want to be focusing on. So man. Yeah. That aspect of perfectionism. Man, that's so especially, crazy. Especially for women. Our it's our bodies, you know, body like image our, issues. God, I have had such a breakthrough with my body confidence in after my experience with Bufo. Like last night I was just in the shower and Michael was in the bathroom too. And I was like, oh my God, I love my body. Like I feel so Mm. sad and so bad for what I've put her through. And like Mm. just being so mean and thinking this idea of perfect that just wasn't ever going to happen. Like forcing my body or wanting to eat a certain way, wanting to work out a certain way. And here my body has carried me through life. It has Mm. carried trauma that I've endured. It has protected Mm -hmm. me from so many things. And here I've just been the most negative ever to my body, Mm. like during sex, during everything. And it's like truly you're not going to heal and your body's not going to heal until you heal your mind. Well, I just – I want to have a conversation about emotional weight at some point because – Oh, my God. Yeah. I just – like – I don't know if it fits right now, but I do feel like just emotional weight – like I actually feel like my face looks like a different person oh, me too. right now. Like mm-hmm. something has changed in my actual structure of my face. I look like a different person now that I have let bullshit go. Like <laughs> yeah. now that I have let my whole life of like pain and healing go, I look like a different person and I'm the most beautiful I've ever been to myself. Like, I can't believe – I truly do feel so beautiful. And when I look at myself in the mirror, I'm like, Jesus Christ, did you always look like this? No, I didn't. Like, my face has changed, the structure of it. I It's weird. I felt that way too. But for me, I think the feeling has been 
you've always been this beautiful. It's just I was holding on to so much that I couldn't see it. Yeah. It's like I've I'm shedding those those layers and those traumas and I can finally see how beautiful I am because I'm not I'm not I don't have barriers. You don't have a mask. I'm on seeing or me. I'm seeing mm-hmm. actually who I am, not Camille to the world. I'm seeing my soul. Right. Yeah. Wow. So I want to talk on emotional weight too. I think that would be so amazing. But we are coming towards the end of time. So I hope so many people can relate to what we just talked about. Mm -hmm. We touched on so many different things. And I feel like the moral of the story and my favorite part of the talk is nobody gives a shit if you're perfect. So stop thinking it. Yeah. Really. Stop faking it. Stop faking it. I mean, this idea of trying to be perfect in your life in the bedroom, it is stopping you from healing the true meaning and the true being of your soul. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, that's It really is. And it's robbing you of your life. Yeah. Like, I'm going to be real dramatic about this. It's robbing you of the joy of your real life. Yeah. Like, the – When you sit down and write down on a piece of paper what matters to you, like, okay, I'm not even going to say what matters to you. It's more about like what energizes you. Yes. It probably isn't like when my body looks perfect. That doesn't actually energize you. No. It's like orgasms energize you. Doing something you're passionate about energizes you. Having like a cuddle session with your best friend, seeing your sister, maybe. Mm-hmm. I mean, this is my, these are my, what energizes yeah. me. Like seeing going Camille, on a walk, going on a walk, feeling excited about something I'm putting out into the world. Like mm-hmm. those are things that energize me. It's not like hitting a money metric, or for me, it's not. Yeah. Um, anyway, so yeah, get back into your joy. Get into that deep joy. So these questions are a little more lighthearted than this episode because this was this was some heavy information. I feel like when you're hearing this for the first time, it can be pretty overwhelming. I, yeah. I feel like when I've addressed this stuff in my healing journey so far, it even – sorry, of course. I'm just going to rant a little bit longer. This even came out in my painting. Okay. Where I would think every single detail needed to be perfect for it to be done. And then I was like, why, why can't I even just like freely paint something without needing Mm -hmm. an outline? Like it's Mm -hmm. like, I'm even trying to control my creativity. So whatever, let it fly. Do your thing. (laughs) Question number one. (laughs) Okay. I would like to say something in addition to that. And that is, I don't know why I didn't say this at the very beginning. Maybe we should put this back there, but It's the idea of being experience-oriented versus outcome-oriented. Oh, So, yes. So it's like instead of looking at everything as like what is the output? What is the outcome? What is the goal? It's like what if the goal is the experience? Mm. Like experience yourself. What do you mean? That's what every single famous person ever has said in history. Like it's not about the – Oh. It's not about the um well add me to the list. <laughs> wait, what is it? What is the famous saying? It's not about the destination, it's about the journey. Yep. <laughs> yeah. But no, that, but I wasn't even saying that. Oh, I'm, okay. I mean kind of I am, but I'm literally putting it as like a versus, like okay. experience oriented versus goal or versus um Output oriented. So if all the time you're like, I'm cleaning my house to be perfect, I'm cleaning my house so other people don't see me, that's like an output, Mm. right? Instead of like, I'm cleaning my house because I feel amazing in a clean space. Wow. Experience. Dang. All right. I need to change my mindset a little bit. That's right. All right. Let's hit these questions. As always, thank you to everyone who sends these in. These are so much fun. Number one. A girl planning a date for a guy. Ideas, advice, do we like Uh, this concept? I want to start. 
<laughs> I'm gonna go with this one. <laughs> it's me. It's me. Okay. Idea. So first of all, ideas for a date. My favorite thing is like go to the beach, have a picnic, or like go on a hike or something. I Just do something. Fucking hate that idea. Oh, <laughs> you do. Okay. Well, it's different. It's so we can both answer in our own way. Lauren, thank you so much. Okay. But it's my turn. So okay. I like to do something outside. I like kind of a time limit thing. So especially if it's like your first dates or something. Advice, do we like this concept? I do enjoy planning a date, but I am going to be totally real. And I was real with one of my girlfriends the other day on this. I'm actually a little bit more traditional in this where I really like a guy to put in effort. Mm -hmm. So there is this problem that I could get in, I could get in this pattern and I have friends that also get in this pattern where we're really good at doing and planning stuff. So we will plan the first couple of dates and then be like, wait, I want him to be planning dates and show up as the masculine version and be this and this. And it's like, yeah, but you kind of already defined yourself as that role when you were planning all the first dates. So I would just be conscious of exactly what you want. I think a lot of the time too, women will step in and plan the dates when the men just aren't willing to put in the effort. And I know I'm using yeah. this in a hetero relationship, um, but this is for any any way you identify is like if you're not noticing the person puts in other effort and all of a sudden you're planning all the dates, I would just take note of that and make sure that that's actually something that you want versus like you're just doing it to spend time with them even though they're not really putting in effort. And that's my advice. Yeah. What about you, Lauren? I mean, yeah, it just depends. Like I, I'm in this like area right now where I just am constantly assessing if the person deserves it. Like yep. right now planning a date for Shane, I'd be like, oh my God, I'm going to plan the shit out of a date. Like yeah. I want to take him and do the most fun thing ever because he puts so much effort into our relationship. I feel like he deserves anything. Like I would suck that dude's dick for an hour because he <laughs> deserves it, right? Like, <laughs> and I do, like I, he deserves it. So ask yourself, does the person deserve it? Like are, you know, do they deserve it? That's really what you need to ask yourself. Yeah. If the answer is yes, because they've put in a bunch of effort, then good. But remember, you are the queen, you are the prize, and the king takes care of the queen. I'm sorry. Hetero, whatever. <laughs> I love that shit. So I love that shit too. I love it. I want to know, like, do you have creativity? Even if you don't have a lot of money, like, do you have creativity? Do you want me to go on a date? Like, are you yeah. saying, you know, like, I have to take you on a date. When can I take you? Or is it you kind of like, don't you think it would be fun to go to the movies? Like, I'm not – no, I'm not into that. No, and I'm really not about like, yeah, we need to hang out soon. And it's like, hang out soon? No, that's fucking bullshit. When are you taking me out? <laughs> what yeah. are we doing? Yeah. Like, I feel like that's more common than not lately where – I feel like a lot of women are planning the dates. Whatever. I'm just all about this effort thing, and I'm so freaking sick of no effort. So um, effort. if this is happening all the time and you're feeling like you don't want to be planning the dates, then don't plan the dates and find someone else. <laughs> right. <laughs> because they don't deserve it. And if it. you're acting like you want to plan the date because <laughs> you're used to doing everything and you're kind of like, no, but I like it. I'm good at the planning role. Make sure that you're not overcompensating for and being the doer, doer, doer because you deserve to receive effort. Boom. Damn, yeah. I love that question. All right. Me too. Number two, me and my hubby want to sleep with a friend. Can this ruin oh, our no. friendship? Can this ruin our friendship? So they want to bring in a third person who is already in the friend group. Could this ruin their friendship? You want to answer first? Yes. It can destroy your friendship. It can be <laughs> yeah. the end of it forever. Like it yeah. can be the worst. Yeah. You could cry. It can be not good. You could get in a fist fight. Like, yes, of course, your friendship can absolutely be destroyed. Yeah. That should be the number one thing that you're thinking. Like, how important is this friend? Yeah. Does this friend have similar goals, similar morals? Are they do they are they actually secretly in love with my husband? Like yep. Can 100% or are they secretly in love with me? Like that's a thing too. Yep. So um, 
asking yourself those questions, making sure that you're having a conversation about this and setting very clear boundaries with what you're okay with for your first interaction. If oh, yeah. you just want to be making out with your friend and your husband is watching, cool. If you're down with full-blown penetration, then cool. But just have boundaries around that. Like, is your husband allowed to like have separate conversations with this person? Do you want to yeah. be on a three-way text? Like, yep. You know, think about those things. Yeah. And then the second something comes up that makes you uncomfortable, like let's say you go ahead and do this, just make sure that your communication's open about it because you it can also enhance your friendship. Like maybe you end up having like this awesome three-way sexcapades and it can be so fun. Yeah really important that right when something comes up for you, you address it. Mm -hmm. So like if it's making you uncomfortable because now they're texting or you're feeling like there's a little bit more flirting going on between them or you're starting to feel a major connection with your friend, tell your husband. Have your husband tell you like it's the communication just couldn't be more important. Yes. It continues throughout the entire thing. I would say this you're asking this question to us, but you need to be asking this question in the same room as your husband and your friend. Because if Mm -hmm. it's heating up and you guys are wanting to, I would literally address this first thing and say like, hey, we are good friends. What's going to happen after? I wanted to give people some examples too of like clear boundaries that you can set. Um, Mm -hmm. Using protection with only your friend. Um, Mm -hmm. Certain positions that you're this is if you're going full blown like penetrate like full blown threesome. Certain positions that you want your husband only doing um with you instead of with them. Um so there are certain things that you won't even think about until the experience happens, but I would just try to think of every single possibility and like set boundaries before like if you walk out of the room, are they allowed to still continue having an experience together or are you are you expecting them to only have an experience when you're in the room? Definitely with the talking after. How is this going to go after? Should we be on a three-way chat? I'm really uncomfortable with you two having separate conversations, stuff like that. Setting boundaries of when it's okay to make those connections. Like, hey, we only want to have threesomes when we are into it. Or is the other person allowed to address you when they want to have an interaction? Like, There are so many details and also so many ways you can feel uncomfortable. So especially when it's a friend, the communication has to be spot on. (laughs) Even I would say too, like setting a boundary, just even for the first time, I think this can be really helpful is throughout the experience, checking in with each other and making sure what's happening is making you feel comfortable. Yep. To me, I think that that is the best option. Like getting the approval throughout the experience of like, hey, is this making you comfortable? Not in a weird way. Like it doesn't have to be every time, but like, is it okay if I do this? Mm -hmm. That kind of thing is very helpful communication. And something else that I'd like to add is that for a lot of threesomes, it can actually be better when it's a friend because you're more comfortable and it's more fun and you already have like a level of intimacy and connection. And it can be really nice to have sex with a friend too. So yeah. Um enjoy yourself. Like it sounds like we're, you know, what we're saying is a lot of like be careful, have boundaries and that kind of thing. And also you can choose to just dive into it and figure it out. It's just make sure you know if this is like your best friend from childhood <laughs> and you're feeling any kind of reservations, like I would really listen to your intuition on this one and try not to confuse it with your pussy and your dick. Like your body might be wanting to do something, but just listen to your intuition. Do you have a good feeling about it? If you do, move forward with boundaries and respect and communication. And hopefully the overwhelming feeling of like we're going to assume goodwill. Like try to assume goodwill that like everybody's there to fuck and have a good time Hopefully nobody has ulterior motives and you're just going to have a great threesome and Yeah. Also just your have friends fun. Pee. How freaking yeah. fun is that? That's the best. I love so, it. So, congratulations on almost having a threesome with your friend. <laughs> and I yes. hope this helps. <laughs> and that wraps up this episode for the week. This one was long and I love this subject. Yes. Thank you for bringing up this subject, Lauren. 
You're Thank welcome. you to our, our wolf pack for sticking, sticking with us. Lucky 11. I hope everyone takes something out of this episode. Please share with your friends who you think are perfectionists and need to hear this. Yes. <laughs> Like, comment, subscribe on any of your podcast streaming networks. This one will be up on YouTube, so check us out there if you yep. fancy. And we love you so much. Yeah, if you want to see this on YouTube, you're going to see my hot man in the background in a couple of the shots. So That's right. Yeah, Thank that's right. Thank you. Oh, and I wanted to say, sis. Yeah. I would like to just say – we said thank you for sticking with us, but what we mean is – Thank you for being in our pack. Like this is so Woo! fun. We love it here. So we have fun. such a good time every single week bringing up these things. Y'all have such good questions, such good feedback. We're just oh, – we love it. We love it so much. We love our wolf pack and we are going to see you next week for episode number 12. That's right, We love you. We love you.